Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well and enjoying the second week of virtual WRIV conference. Welcome to the late breaking session on COVID-19. Today I will be sharing with you our experiences in rapid development of an ADE assay to support COVID-19 vaccine studies. So what is ADE or antibody dependent enhancement? Uh, it is also known as immune enhancement. Um, the best way to explain is if you look at the image here, on the left hand side, you have the receptor mediated viral fusion. Uh, in this case, the spike protein from SARS-CoV-2 binds to the ACE2 receptor, and that's how the viral mRNA gains entry to the cell. Uh, on the right hand side, what you see is the antibody dependent enhancement in this case, uh, the spike protein um, or other viral protein binds to the antibody and forms a virus antibody complex. And then virus gains entry to the cell via the FC receptor. The immune cells that expresses the FC receptor binds to that antibody and that allows the infusion of the virus itself. And the same thing may happen through the complement cascade through uh, C1Q and the C3B receptor. The ultimate result from this is that uh, it leads to the amplification of the virus and it increases infectivity and the virulence. So why is ADE important? Um, essentially, in case of ADE, the normal mechanism of antigen-antibody complex clearance fails. Instead, it provides an alternative route for host cell infection. Uh, it can be a significant uh, safety issue uh, in a vaccine study where ADE has been linked to development of cytokine storm syndrome, which occurs in most severe cases of SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. Um, it should be noted that ADE has been reported for other several viruses such as dengue, yellow fever virus, and Zika virus. ADE assays can be very helpful in understanding the antibodies that have been generated in response to vaccine uh, if those antibody population enhance secondary infection with related to SARS-CoV-2 and provide valuable insight into the pathogenesis of COVID-19 infections. So what are the challenges associated with ADE assays? Traditionally, biological methods for the evaluation of ADE requires either the determination of platforming units in vero cells or antibody staining of infected cells. Both of these processes are labor intensive, time consuming, and not suitable for high throughput sample analysis. In addition, they do require BSL-3 laboratory. Given the current public health situation with COVID-19, it is critical to develop a rapid, easy to execute, and cost-effective ADE assay that does not require BSL-3 laboratory. ADE assays based on reportable viral, reported viral particle can overcome some of the challenges associated with platforming units or antibody staining methods. So here is a workflow for ADE assays when using reported viral particles or RVPs. The first step is to heat and activate the serum samples containing anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. Then add RVPs and incubate for one hour at 37 degrees centigrade. Then add cell and again incubate one hour at 37 degree. And then change media and incubate for 48 hours at 37 degree. And finally the endpoint measurement. In our case, RVPs were transfected with GFP, so we measured GFP positive cells using flow cytometry. We reported results uh, as fold enhancement of infection. Um, it was calculated by dividing the average percentage of GFP positive cells in the serum by the average percentage of GFP positive cells in the control valves uh, with RVPs. 
Here are the key reagents and optimization parameters for this assay. We have utilized a DOE-based approach to optimize these parameters. The first one is the reporter viral particle. Um, in this case, you can have GFP, luciferase, or other reporter gene. It's important to optimize the, the uh, concentration of the reporter viral particle to maximize the signal to noise ratio. The next reagent is target cell line that expressing FC gamma receptor. Uh, it can be K562, U937, or THP1 cells. Uh, it is important to optimize the number of cells per well. The incubation times needs to be optimized. Uh, positive controls, when it comes to positive control, there are several options. It can be a polyclonal or monoclonal or oligoclonal. Uh, in our case, we utilize a mixture of monoclonal or the oligoclonal. Um, the endpoints can be in addition to facts. So it could be ELISA, ELISPOT, or real-time PCR. One of the key uh, factor in our success in rapid development of ADA assay um, is the access to a recombinant antibody library against our COV2 viral proteins. It is a computationally optimized immune chicken library. Um, it has high diversity. Uh, the screening and the selection are being done using next generation sequencing. So when we select an antibody, we can generate recombinant antibodies uh, based on the sequence. Um, it also have artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm for antibody engineering and for in vitro affinity maturation. We have generated 68 antibodies uh, against the nucleocapsid protein and the 41 antibodies against spike protein using the chicken recombinant library. All antibodies were screened in neutralizing antibody assay. In this case, uh, we utilized a ligand binding assay to screen these antibodies. And the neutralizing antibody is defined as the antibodies that can inhibit the binding of RBD to ACE2 in an ELISA format. For ADSA, we utilize uh, two different concentration. One concentration was at IC50 value, and the another one was at 50-fold dilution of that concentration. As you can see on the left-hand side, um, we um, we see some of the ADE activities for some of these antibodies, like uh, the, uh, the antibody 1 and 2, uh, that shows a significant increase in GFP positive um, cells uh, at a lower concentration. Um, we see also in case of 9, there is an ADE activity uh, for number 3 and uh, for number 10, we don't see any significant ADE activity. When we um, screen all 68 uh, antinucleocapsid antibodies, we found 23 positive um, ADE positive samples, uh, but it should be noted that in case of antinucleocapsid antibodies, uh, most of the ADE response was pretty weak, um, maybe less than three or four fold um, increase in GFP positive cells. Uh, in case of anti-spike antibodies, 41 of them were screened, uh, 18 were found to be neutralizing, and the 11 of them were uh, shown to be have AD activity. After we demonstrated performance uh, of this assay using the recombinant antibodies, we wanted to confirm the results using the human serum samples that contain neutralizing antibodies. In this case, we utilize again the lichen binding method to identify serums that contain uh, neutralizing antibodies. We prepare three pools, one with high titer, one with medium titer, and one with low titer. As you can see in the high titer graph here on the left hand side, uh, we have uh, in the y axis GFP positive fold increase, and in the x axis you have dilution in log 10 scale. We see that as we dilute uh, these samples, we start seeing an increase in GFP-positive um, cells. 
we see the highest fold increase about 14 fold at 100,000 fold dilution. We see about 22 fold increase for medium titer samples at 100 fold dilution. And for low titer, we see almost 23 fold increase in GFP positive cells uh, at 10 fold dilution. We also ran a control serum from healthy normal uh, population. Um, it is also a pool serum, and in all cases, the results were um, about 1, 1 1.5. Uh, that is pretty comparable to our no antibody samples. To further investigate the AD activity, uh, to confirm that the AD activity that we are seeing uh, is uh, mediated by the antibodies in the human pool serum samples, uh, we purified the antibodies uh, from the human serum uh, and we run them at one microgram per mL um, along with the flow through uh, which should be IgG depleted. And what we see in the result is that um, the IgG fraction at one microgram per mL shows the AD activities, uh, whereas the, the flow through that is IgG depleted uh, shows uh, pretty little to no ADE activity, which is pretty comparable to our control from healthy normal uh, serum. As I mentioned uh, in my slide one, uh, that uh, the ADE is induced uh, by the high affinity interaction between FC fragment and the FC receptors. In order to evaluate uh, that our um, the assay response is due to ADE activity, we evaluated uh, different cell lines with different FC receptor profile. Um, these are K562, Raji, uh, human macrophages, and THP1 cell line. Um, each of the cell lines were tested using positive control antibodies. Um, in, in our case, uh, the positive control antibody is actually a cocktail of six different monoclonal antibodies. We tested them in full length format, uh, Fab Prime 2, Fab, and no antibody. Um, and one of the advantage of using recombinant antibodies is that it's pretty easy to generate that. Uh, FAB, FAB prime 2 and the full length antibody because the sequence is known. When we tested um, the full length antibody um, in those cell lines, we see that the highest increase in GFP positive cells we see in human macrophages, um, then THP1, Raji cell and K562. In case of FAB and FAB prime 2, we see very little or no uh, uh, increase in uh, the GFP positive cells. In order to investigate further that the ADE activity we're seeing uh, is coming from the interaction of FC receptors uh, on the cells uh, with uh, the FC of the human anti cov 2 antibodies, we examine the effect of blocking each of the three types of FC receptors on ADE. We utilize human macrophages um, uh, in this experiment and purified human anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies were used at one microgram per mL. The result shows that in all cases, whenever we blocked FC receptor one or two or three, we do see a decrease in GFP positive cells. We see the highest decrease in all three cases when we block the FC receptor three. Um, it might suggest that uh, the AD activity for SARS-CoV-2 may be mediated through FC receptor three. Uh, it's probably a little premature to draw this conclusion. Um, uh, definitely additional work should be performed uh, to confirm uh, the AD activity and how it specifically relates to the SARS-CoV-2. So I am on to my final slide. Uh, in summary, it is well established that vaccine-induced antibodies or antibodies induced by natural infection has the capacity to cause antibody-dependent enhancement. There is very little is known regarding the mechanism of ADE, specifically how the nature of the antibodies 
uh, such as epitope specificity, neutralizing capacity, uh, the antibody subclass relates to ADE. RPP-based ADE assay can be a good substitute for plaque-based enhancement assay. It reduces the complexity and definitely increases the throughput, reducing the cost. The comparison between RPP-based and plaque-based assays have been performed for other viruses and it shows strong correlation. Uh, we have not performed it for this assay and we, this is something definitely we plan to perform in future. Additional work should be done to understand the interaction of antibody virus complex with FC receptor and their impact on the antibody dependent enhancement. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions you may have during the panel discussion and have a good day.